Hey guys, thanks for tuning back into InRange TV. We are back with the MDR. The MDR. It's got an optic on it too, but that's just for it us does. to play with. Yeah, that's separate. Yep. So, uh, we, as you know, had some issues, reliability issues with the MDR, specifically with military surplus ammunition. Mm -hmm. And so we sent it back to Desert Tech. Mm -hmm. And we have had, for a couple of weeks, we've had a really impressive, valuable, ongoing back and forth about what we think needs to be tweaked on the rifle. Yep. And Desert Tech went in and they made some changes to the gas system, they made some changes to the extractor, and to the hammer spring. I have to say I'm very impressed by this response. First Extremely. of all, we put out the video, we really did want the gun to work. We always want guns to work, let's yeah. be realistic. Um, and it's always surprising that sometimes they don't. Um, right. And in this regard, we expected this to be great, and it wasn't, and there were some issues. And, and I think that they didn't expect people to be using the type of ammunition we were using. I really think that is the core problem. Yeah. yeah. So because we're using Milserp, and I think that Desert Tech has always been, you know, a bolt action for like precision rifle company. Right. That this moving into this new world of a semi automatic combat oriented or three gun match or two gun match or semi automatic rifle in general, not only that, a semi automatic bullpup that's very um, ambitious in its goals. The idea of people putting, you know, relatively low-cost Milserp ammunition through it wasn't something that really occurred to them because that's just not the world they live in. Right. So when we ran into this, we ran into a number of issues. As you said, we saw certain ammunition wouldn't cycle. Some would tear the rim. Some would short stroke. Some would get stuck and not fully eject. And that was gas system issue. And then we also had light strikes on hard primers. Yep. And and so what they've done is they've modified the gas system, right? So we got yep. six ports now. So there were six ports to begin with. Okay. But what they've done is changed the sizes of them. The dimensions. So, you now have one to six. Uh, number two is specifically set as the suppressed okay. setting. All right. Number four is specifically designated as the normal setting. And number six is specifically designated as the adverse setting. So six is all the way open. Correct. One would be all like as, as closed as is possible. Right. Smallest. Two is normal suppressed. If you can still, you could still go down to one. But you've got a little room. So normal is four. So you can go down to three if you needed to, or up to five, but you're still in that realm. And six is, of course, if you're dealing with something really strange. Right. They've increased what the spring tension or pe pressure? Basically, um, the hammer spring. Okay. Yeah. Um, that is that. That's one I wasn't really worried about. I figure that's probably going to be simple enough for them to work out. Uh, and then they actually changed up the extractor as well. One yes. of the things that we and other people had noticed was, even when when the gun was cycling properly, you would often see damage to cartridge rims, mm -hmm. and that was because it had a relatively small, narrow extractor surface area. Right. So. Yeah. You're exerting, you're you're focusing the force of extraction on a small part of the cartridge rim. Mm -hmm. They have widened the extractor, um, and apparently the reason they didn't do this at first was their initial version of a wider extractor um, had some durability issues and would oh. tend to break before it had, you know, it, like a thousand rounds, which isn't sufficient. Okay. Uh, so they re-engineered the wide extractor, and they now have a wide extractor that has a much longer lifespan um, and ameliorates all that cartridge rim damage because it's now spreading the force of extraction over a wider piece of the brass. Awesome. So we've got a bunch of M80 ball, same thing we've been using before, Hertenberg, yep. which happens to be the stuff that you and I tend to standardize on. In fact, I've got a whole bunch more coming. Yep. So what we're going to do is load up some mags, and we're going to test this gun now with the new improved gas system, new improved hammer spring, and the new improved extractor. And hopefully, we're going to see this thing run 100%. All right, let's do it. Yeah. All right, it's not quite a full magazine. I spent three rounds confirming zero on the scope, so we've got 17 left. I'm out. All right, so I've got another 20 round mag of M80 Ball Hurtenberg. Ian was just shooting, so there should be a fired case in this here. So when I load this and drop this forward, it should go ahead and go bloop and throw that out. Yep. Don't, Don't drop it forward. Use the cool lever on the back. Ooh. Bloop. There it goes. Everything seems to be working great. So first mag was no problems. Here's the second mag. Nary an issue whatsoever. Two mags, 40 rounds, no problems. Everything's ejecting properly, firing properly. I'm hitting the steel plate without any issues. Maybe can work on the zero a little bit, but that's not what we're out here for today. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. Mag came nice free. Let's see if it'll drop free, actually. 
and it does that too. And you may notice that I was shooting it with the ejection port on the left side, even though I fired right-handed. And because of the way it ejects, probably looks like it's coming out of my mouth. We heard that in the other video. Didn't cause an issue. It hit my arm a little bit, but it wasn't a problem. But we can switch it back and forth easily as well. So let's go through another mag in just a moment. Right now, man, I think they fixed it. That's a lot easier to hit with quickly from prone. <laughs> Welcome to dusty Arizona. If I hit the very top of the target, maybe I can knock it over. All right, Carl, you're gonna have to back me up on this. I think it kicks less. I think whatever they did to the gas port sizes, I think it actually kicks less. And I wonder if that's just me. And if it's not just me, I wonder if it's a function of having the wider extractor, meaning uh, that they're able to actually use a bit less gas pressure. Uh, I don't know if that actually makes sense. It's just what's occurring to me off the top of my head, but this, this actually feels like it kicks a little bit less than last time. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this prone as well to see if I see a recoil reduction like Ian perceived, but you know, I don't need to shoot this in this left-handed config even though it's not an issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the bolt and let's take the plate off. This is so cool. This is why we didn't wanna shoot it without the plate because this is a quintessentially important part of the design of this gun. What they've done with this is made this field changeable in a way that really no other gun has ever done. So that's such a unique feature that taking that off is taking away a lot of the development and R&D and reason for this gun to exist. So anyways, I've changed it to right-handed. I'm gonna go ahead and put in another magazine of 20. I'm gonna shoot prone and see what I get. I wanna remind everybody that we're on normal, essentially setting four on the gas system, which is nowhere where we were with the original. We have to be all the way up at six. So this is working well with M80 ball mil spec stuff on four. Not one issue. We've gone through, what, three or four mags? Four mags at this point, 80 rounds, zero issues, prone and offhand, and I'm hammering that steel down there. Let's go ahead and stand up and do one more thing. All right, we'll check back with Carl about recoil in a moment, but first, we put 80 rounds through this thing. It's getting a little toasty. We figured what better way to round it out, get a nice solid 100 rounds on camera than with a full mag dump. Ready? Hundred rounds, literally not a single malfunction of any kind. Let's get that last case out. This is pretty cool. Carl, why don't you come back here? Let's talk about uh, what we think about this thing. All right, so recoil. Yeah, the recoil. We, we kind of bypassed that because yeah, we, we did just blast more ammo through it. Well, I got excited shooting prone because the gun's working and it had yeah. no issues, so that was exciting. And I forgot about the reason I was shooting prone. Um, yeah, you know, I'm going to say there is a perceivably less recoil impulse than the original gas system. It's interesting that they didn't claim that there would be. No, they like, didn't. We've been talking to them a lot, and they, yeah. they were telling us, they were describing what they did to, to fix the issues, uh -huh. and they never said a word about recoil. No, they didn't. Some of these things are nuanced, and yeah. it's hard to, and obviously we didn't measure the amount of foot pins of energy being deployed into our shoulder, right. didn't hang it from a pendulum and let it swing, <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, but when, when I shot it offhand initially, I went, this seems much more mild than what we were dealing with to get it to run with M80 ball before. Yeah. But remember, we were at six. We're now at right. four. Now, the gas ports are completely different dimensions, so right. it kind of doesn't even matter. Yeah. But we were, at, we were at six, and now we're at four. And on top of that extractor as well, um, it absolutely was much more mild to shoot now than it was before. This thing, 20 rounds prone previously, actually was uncomfortable and, wow. and verging on painful. Jarring would be the yeah. word. It was jarring. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nothing. It is, it is not this time. Nothing. That, that really takes me by surprise. M80 ball Hurtenberg in this on gas setting for normal is no longer jarring. 
I'm almost even hesitant to talk about it because it sounds to me, just to my own ears, it sounds like so too much. Like yeah. so many reviews you hear where people are like, all right, it's a 308, but it shoots like a 223. Yeah, no. And it's not. They never do. Yeah. But it actually legitimately is nicer to shoot than it was before. It's pleasant to fire. And I remember when we were talking in the original video, one of the things that I proposed as potential reality of why we were feeling that way wasn't maybe the actual recoil, but just being close to the muzzle blast. Because when you're in a bullpup, you're much closer to that eject, that port. Right, at the barrel. Oh, filming and, you from the side, this thing is... Well, yeah, but that's like... It's, like, it's a 308 muzzle blast. Yeah, it is. It is right although that's still you. a flash iron on a muzzle break. But yeah. but being closer to the end of the muzzle gives you a little more impulse when you're on the gun. You'll, you'll notice the same thing with an SBR to a degree, sure. of course, but yeah. there's more unspent powder on an SBR too, of course. Um, but compared to before to now, absolutely much more mild. Um, it's, yeah. I'm going to say it recoils a little more than the AR-10 yes. that we were shooting, the BRN-10A. But... O overall, it has no. to be because of the mechanical system they've got back here yes. with the ejection. You have to have the bolt going a little faster yeah. to function all of these parts. Um, yeah. But that's that's kind of the trade-off that you get for having a fully ambidextrous, fancy bullpup. But the recoil on four was by no means problematic. Oh, not at all. It was it was comfortable and fine. That thing's getting toasty, but it's not actually uncomfortable to hold. This is warm, but not yeah. hot. And we, we've gone through... Um, it's 100 rounds in pretty short succession. Th this is great because, you know, when we first got the gun, we we couldn't get through a mag. Right. We, we really couldn't get through a mag. We could get close. We got, it'd be like 18, 19 rounds. Tantalizing. Just... <laughs> Never, we really didn't get through mags. I mean, yeah. maybe we got through one or two, but we really couldn't get through a mag. And we just went through 100 rounds, five mags, yep. including a mag dump. Yep. Uh, with absolutely zero issues with mil spec M80 ball mil serp. Yeah, um, and this literally is out of the box from them. Yep. Uh, we didn't even. We can actually now see the gas system through. I, I'm really curious. I can't remember that. I wonder if this is an added hole that they put in the handguard. I'm going to sound like an idiot if it turns out it was there the whole time. Well, there is a witness but, port here, and the ooh, that is that little part. That yes, part, that part's hot. So this is actually connected directly to the barrel so that if you were to zero optic on it, you could mess around and not have to worry about losing zero. Right. But guess what? That's a yeah, heat that, point. Right, that's toasty. Don't touch that. Anyways, that little window there, you can actually see in there and you can yep. see the end setting. Um, it'd be hard to change the gas. Maybe you could if you were clever. Yeah. You maybe could now modify. You know what? That port's new. That wasn't there. I, I don't think it was. So yeah. anyways, there's a window here and you can see in there and you can see the gas setting you're on. If you were clever and determined, I think you could change the gas setting without taking the handguard off. But you really don't need to. Not anymore. You're not going to mess with that gas system. No, and that's one, I, of, that's one of the things they were talking about. Yeah. I really also like the fact that they now actually have them. Three of them are numbered and the other three are letter identified. Yeah. So you don't have to try and remember, wait, was it five? Was it six? No, you just set it to N. What's N normal? normal. Yeah. So I like that. Yep. Um, overall, I think they have taken that what had the potential to be a really cool, creative, interesting gun, mm -hmm. and now it actually is. I agree. So. Just like I, first of all, I want to commend them on this. The first of all, the response to what was unfortunately and un, impossibly. We could do nothing more than give you what happened, and it was right. a negative result. We're not going to whitewash something or pretend like it did differently than it really did. And if you've watched InRange for any length of time, you'll know that that's the case. And these guys responded in the most ethical way a corporation or company or gun developer <laughs> ever could. Yep. They not only were not angry, they looked at it, they went, whoa, that's not what we want. What happened to you? And then we had a number of calls with them discussing all the things that we experienced, mm -hmm. the ammo that we used, some of yours and mine thoughts about maybe these are ways that this could be remediated. They had their own thoughts as well. And we actually collaborated with them in multiple sessions and calls. They put out a video from the CEO and president saying, here's what we're doing. And you know he's the CEO because of how awkward he looked on camera. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair. That's a job you don't get for being the, the glitzy media person. That was not a paid actor. <laughs> not a paid actor, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but... They explained what they're going to do. And then not only did they say they were going to do it, they did it. Yeah. We've had companies way back in the beginnings, and I don't even need to bring this up, but way back in the beginning of InRange, we had a company that gave us something that didn't work. And they gave us this whole song and dance. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to fix this. They did nothing. Yeah. They just let us on for a long time. Shockingly, that gun is, I believe, now completely out of production. It's a forgotten weapon. Yeah. This gun, these guys came to us and said, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this. Oh, we still have a problem with that. We did this, and here's why we did it, and here's what we did, and here are the gas ports. And, and then they send it to us, and it works. Yeah. This is now delivering on the promise of being, I'm going to go ahead and say it, I know you love your FAMAS. <laughs> this is the most technologically advanced bullpup there is now. It is more advanced, yes. yes. They have addressed the ambidextrous issue. Mm -hmm. You do not have to take off the cover to use the gun, which is a ridiculous reason to use the gun. The reason, half the reason this yeah. gun exists is because of that. That's an incredibly great feature. I'm not pointing this at you on camera. Yep. Right here, it's off to the direction here, people always say. that The fact that you can switch it easily in the field, 
and you don't even have to, really. The ambidextrous handling is all there. The trigger's reasonably decent for a bullpup. Yep. The fact that you can eject the magazine from two different locations. Um, uh, the hand, the ergonomics are good. I Unfortunately, yeah. just the rail alone makes this more practical than the FAMAS. I does. hate to say that, but yeah. that's the reality. The you matter. could put a bipod on there. Yeah. And the bipod would swivel. Yeah. yeah. And have adjustable. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> point being is agreed. But I mean, I, we've handled a number of bullpups. Or we've handled the, the FAMAS is excellent. Mm -hmm. I shot a FS2000 for a long time. And the FS2000's way of eject, dealing with the ejection issue was interesting to say the least. Um, the... Uh, they've addressed all of those concerns. The only lingering thing that I find problematic is the ability to see into the actual chamber of the gun well. Right. And guess what? That's the nature of a lot of bullpups. It's any, not a, any bullpup that, that is forward or any non-standard ejecting bullpup, yep. that is the issue. So you can take off the plate and see in there if you really need to. Um, so I would, I would caution anyone that's a user of this gun or any other bullpup that isn't really easy to clear, like see in there, to make sure that you have a clear gun when you don't trust the mechanical parts, trust your eyes, right? Yeah. Make sure it's an empty chamber. Outside of that one safety concern, which is a safety concern on many bullpups, this thing's darn cool. Desert Tech has delivered. They've yep. shown their respectability in the industry, I think. I mean, they have gone leaps and bounds to prove that. And I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this at Mystery Mountain 3 Gun. Oh, yeah. all right. Cool. I'm signed up for Mystery Mountain 3 Gun, which is coming up in March. Mm -hmm. um, it is the big, big, big 3 Gun event up at Rio Salado near Phoenix. I'm not a big 3 Gun guy, as we know, but Sinister Rifleman talked me into it. And I was thinking, what am I gonna do? I could go like, they have a division called Heavy Metal or Iron Man, and it's 308, 45, and a pump action shotgun. And uh, I'm looking at all that, and I'm like, well, I've got the BRN-10, which is cool. I could go World War II guy and go 1895 Winchester and just not care about score whatsoever. But guess what? They just got here, and this is now working. Yeah. And we got through 100 rounds. I, I, not only because of the 100 rounds we fired, but because of the way this company has treated us and treated their customers, mm -hmm. I have faith in this. I'm going to use it. I'm going to awesome. go through the match with this. All right. Very cool. And I can use Hurtenberg, which is, guess what? What I have stacked The ammo high. we have. Yes. The ammo I have. I'm not going to go about... I'm Sorry, Desert Tech. I'm not going to go out and buy a bunch of American Eagle to shoot Mystery Mountain 3 gun because I can't afford to do that. Yeah. So I've got a bunch of that Hurtenberg, and I'm going to shoot this at Mystery Mountain 3 gun as my 308 rifle. Awesome. So I'd like to thank them for that. The other thing we didn't mention mm -hmm. is we did ask them, these modifications, the extractor, yes. the gas system, and the spring, if an already existing customer wants them, they will do that. Yeah. If you're not currently having a problem with your gun, cool. But they said that they will absolutely address any of those concerns under warranty repair service. Yep. You can get the new gas system, the extractor, and the hammer spring should you need it. And that's going to be something that they're delivering to any customer that already has a Desert Tech MDR. Right. And it will be standard on all of them in production. I think actually from the date you see this video, they're already standard in new production. So if, you, if you're interested in this and you want to buy one, anything you order from, from here out has all of these corrected improved features and i would i'm going to go ahead and I'm a, i know for a fact i can't I, i'm not gonna i'm gonna speak for them because i'm sure their answer would be this if you bought one that was on the shelf that didn't have the new parts on it yeah, they'd get them, fix it. they'd get them to you yep. so uh these guys have done an outstanding job they've designed a very interesting gun that's taken a, a while to get to the market but i'm really excited really honestly legitimately excited that you and i got to be part of actually just a little bit of making this thing where it make it meet its optimal potential. It's quite gratifying. It really is to, to, to work with them and have that opportunity and not only do a video about a cool gun, but to actually be a part of being uh, able to make something that should have been there already there now is exciting. Yeah. And I'm thankful. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, I think, well, obviously we'll have some more footage with the MDR uh, once SMM3G happens. Mm -hmm. uh, a little delayed after the match, whatever, whenever we yeah, there's get always those a published. Yeah, there's always backlog on that uh, stuff. But very cool. So thanks to Desert Tech. Thanks for you guys. Um, if you're looking for a 308 bullpup, if, uh, frankly, if you're looking for a 308 modern rifle, there's not a lot of choices. And a lot of them are like, eh, would you want a 308 Tavor? Personally, no. But you know, that's a question of taste to the individual, and some people like them. And there's, I'm not going to say, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. But at this point, given what they've done and how they've remediated the issues, oh, I would absolutely go with this. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons for that. I'd take this over a Tavor or an uh, Keltec, an RFB. Yeah, and the, actually the RFB handled you, that, that treated you reasonably well. The RFB, the 308 one. Yeah. Which we don't oh. have any video on. No, no, that's uh, correct. Yeah. But I'd take one of these instead. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. They've, uh, they've, they've delivered to the market what they said they would, which is, I really am going to say this, top of the line, most advanced bullpup in 308. And there's a 5.56 coming. Yep. 
So uh, I, I, I'm astonished. And I think that if you watch the original video where we had problems, watch the video from Desert Tech and then watch this, you're going to see that we've done a complete yeah. 180 degree turn. This rifle is good to go. Um, whether or not you like bullpups is another conversation. Yes. That's neither here nor there. If you need a bullpup and you want a bullpup 308, I will thumbs up on this gun. Yep. So, Same here. All right. Thanks, Desert Tech, for being those guys that you are and for coming through to not only us, but the entire industry of people that you've been promising this gun for because you've delivered. So, All right. Close us out. Yep. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, by the way, they did give us this gun. Yes. We did not buy this. This was a, this was provided to us. So, so you know. But they, it was also provided to us when we said it wasn't working yep. either. You saw the video when we first got so, it. So, guys, if you like this kind of stuff, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We did go through a mega ton of 308 in the process of working with them on this issue. Today we only went through 100 rounds, but we went through a lot more for the other videos. It's Patreon that pays for that kind of stuff, and it's you, the viewer, that supports us because we're not monetized in any other way. If you can't do that, we understand. Just share and subscribe. You can find all of our distribution channels on inrange.tv. Thanks a lot.